Welcome back, everybody. October the 5th, Monday Morning Briefing, episode number 49. Real quick, I'm kind of thinking about maybe changing the name of this series, of this video, to just Saddle Shop Briefing, just because it sometimes doesn't come out on Mondays. Actually, it never comes out on Mondays. Let me know in the comments if you have a preference. It just seems kind of long, and I was kind of thinking the other day, I was like, I ought to just shorten that up to just Saddle Shop Briefing. I may just leave it alone. I haven't really decided, but I thought I'd mention it this morning. Couple things. Last weekend was the citywide garage sale. So if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen that my lovely wife ended up finding me a cast iron wok. And I've seen these before. I uh, haven't ever had one. I've got a lot of cast iron. I really like cast iron cookware. To me, there's nothing that really compares to it if it's seasoned right. And so that's what we use in the house. And and I'll use it outside as well. I've got uh, three or four Dutch ovens and some other things that we use for outside cooking. And uh, they just work great, but this walk was a really cool find. There was a fella here that the citywide garage sale, uh, the whole town, they just kind of schedule it. There's one in the fall, one in the spring, just like it does a normal garage sale, but it's the whole town. So there's lots of them going on all that weekend. And so the people come from, from neighboring towns and, and stuff like that. And so it was pretty busy, a lot of people in town, which is good for other businesses and stuff. And we had some visitors come in here, just wanted to look around and that kind of thing. But there was a guy here locally that him and his wife refinish uh, cast iron and they collect cast iron so he had a lot of pieces that he was trying to just sell because he had doubles or had stuff he wasn't using but this one is is in really good shape it's a lodge brand so it's not super old but it's it's in really good shape and the seasoning looks good on it of course we'll touch that up just a little bit but we'll end up using that in the house um the only thing i suggest with cast iron is as uh i've usually had a glass cooktop with electric uh, electric heat it doesn't work as good as if you've got uh gas and so our our stove top now is gas and so all my cast iron works so much better on that on the gas range and so that's what we're we've been using but these are really good for you know if you want to make fajitas fajita tacos or something like that you can cook your meat in there and then move stuff around and then cook your veggies in the center and then mix it all together or you can do uh, breakfast tacos and you know eggs and sausage or bacon or whatever you want to do you can cook it all in one pan and of course you can do stir fry who doesn't like stir fry so you can definitely do that in there as well that'll be a trick for me on doing it in cast iron because the walks i've used in the past have just been either uh, non-stick or they've been stainless or something like that but anyway i'm excited to get that in the house and get it cleaned up and seasoned a little bit and give that a shot also this weekend i had a little bit of a mishap i'm tooled this i may have posted the picture of these yokes on instagram at some point but i was just playing with some different border stamps and just trying to come up with some borders that were kind of different came up with this one uses i think three three different stamps four different stamps to create that and i thought it looked pretty cool but i just tried it on a on a wristlet purse i chose this brown material here which is just a nice oil tan about a four ounce uh six ounce somewhere around there and it worked out really well it made a really nice purse the problem is it's a little bit firm and so I just wanted to mention to you, whenever you build our wristlet purse, your material is going to kind of determine whether you're going to turn it inside out like this one is, where you don't see any of the stitches and you build it inside out and then flip it back out, or if you just fold it together and stitch it straight. And that's the way I would suggest if you're going to do fringe. So if you're going to add fringe to one of these, then I would definitely um, just build it right side out and just sew around the edge and you'll see the stitches and it'll, it'll look nice but that that way you're fighting because i don't know how you would turn this inside out without it being a real pain with all that fringe on the inside hanging out in there or the piece that you're going to fringe out inside there but what happened with this one was i got a little bit over anxious when i was turning it inside out and i was almost there i had most of it turned had the zipper open had it all turned and then i I just kind of got in a hurry and got frustrated and kind of just started prying on to get it the last bit of the way. When I did, I tore the tab. So the other side has a has a tab on this side. As y'all know, on our wristlet pattern, the zipper piece here has this little tab. And you can push, push this tab into the purse and then you can put a D-ring right here. Um, you can put one on each side if you want, if you want to make it a crossbody or you can just put it on one side and, and make your little wrist strap. Then the other side just sticks in there. Well, that part ripped, and so I had to cut it off. And so what I'm gonna end up having to do now is I'm gonna cut a little piece out of uh, four ounce, and I'll hand sew that in there. I may sew it on the machine, but I'm gonna sew that on there and then put my D-ring. It, it'll look a little different than most of my wristlets just because we did have a mistake, but that's, I'm able to 
fix it so that it's still a viable product because you don't want to just give up on something because one piece of it broke. Sometimes you've got to adapt, make a little change, go a little bit di different direction. We're not building a hundred of these for one client or something where they all have to be consistent. This is a single piece that will be available for sale on our website and on the sales floor. So if it's a little bit different, it's not going to make any, it's not going to matter. So we're going to go ahead and fix that and, I, and, and make it look as professional as possible. And I think it's going to look really good. But anyway, so I would just be careful when you're turning these things inside out. If your material is a little bit firm and it's not really soft, it's just going to flip super easy. Then uh, just be real careful as you're flipping that inside out. Um, you might even, if your material, if you're, if you're, kind of questioning your material and you're worried you might not be able to get it flipped just sew it flat just sew it and and sew your deal around there and you'll see the stitches and as long as they're pretty stitches use a color if you want do whatever but that'll just save you the heartache of having to flip these and then chance tearing that because that's the first one i've made i don't know how many of these things so far and that's the first one that tore right there and it may have just been the leather you know uh leather's not a not a very consistent uh, material it's it's it, it's a natural product so you may get spots in there that aren't as aren't as good or maybe they, they've got a little soft spot in them it may have had a little a little nick in there already that i didn't see but just be prepared to adapt and kind of change and and uh, stay a little bit flexible when you're building these projects because sometimes you'll have something like that happen and you got to make a change speaking of the wristlets we have had dies for these wristlet purses for quite some time we've only been offering them to the newsletter we have a page on the website called from the cut bench and that page we set up for our newsletter community just to kind of experiment and see if anyone, anybody would be interested in, in, uh, in getting products that, that we don't normally offer on the website. So basically the premise of the page is that I cut every week usually, um, depending on what projects I'm working on, I'll usually cut for myself, for the shop, every week. When I'm doing that, if I'm cutting out, say I've got two wristlets to build for somebody and a couple wallets and belts, I usually cut more than I need. One, we might have a mistake or a problem or something may get damaged. Um, also, two, if I'm cutting out of a side of leather and there's enough material to get more than one, while I'm there, I'll go ahead and get an extra one or two, maybe three, like shave kits or whatever it is that I'm cutting. Traditionally, I've just put those back and put them in a Tupperware or a box or something so that I have them. Next time I have an order, I don't have to cut one. We can go ahead and just pull that out of the box and go to building it. So a few months back, I thought, why am I holding all this material? We can offer this to... Uh, other craftsmen and if they want to you know build a shave kit and i've got two of them available they're more welcome to buy one i can always cut more so we decided to build a page on the website to where we could offer these kind of one-off items random items there may be only one of something on there there may be a dozen of them on there and when they're gone there may not be any more on there for quite a while or if ever um, because sometimes it's material that I have that I may not be able to get a hold of again. It may be a piece of alligator. It may be a piece of ostrich. It may be, you know, uh, a, a certain color of oil tin that I'm cutting parts out for for the wristlet or something else, and they may not be. I might not be able to get that color or that product again. So it's not something that we want to offer all the time on the website on the material pack page, because it's not something I can reproduce, you know, going forward. So the page is really just set up for that. If you want to peruse that page, it is now live on the website. It was always on the website, but it wasn't in the navigation. And uh, you sure could have stumbled upon that page without being a part of the newsletter, and you may have, and, uh, and that's fine. But now it is in the navigation. We did it for three months, I guess, or so with the newsletter group, and it, it was very well received. People loved it. They, they did buy a lot of product on there. We had a bunch of random items on there, wallets. Like I think I had three wallets with white interior and we had some different just things that i just had some material that uh that we went ahead and offered on there and so it's been doing good so we decided to go ahead and open that up to everybody so it is on the website it's under leather worker resources right below material packs you'll see from the cut bench that's the page and i would suggest checking that page out once a week we are still going to notify the newsletter first whenever we add new stuff to that page so they get you know the newsletter we send a, uh, an email out once a week, once every other week, sometimes once every three weeks. It just depends on what, what's going on. Like I said, I don't send a newsletter unless I have something valuable to tell you, something to tell you, something new that's out, or just some information I want to relay. And uh, But they will still get notified when I add stuff to that page. I will notify them directly. And then if after a couple of days, we might share something off that page on social media. But if you want to want to kind of check that page out, you can sure go to our website at dgsaddlery.com. And like I said, it's under Leatherworker Resources at the bottom underneath Material Pack. You'll see From the Cut Bench, and you can check that out. 
Uh, right now we've got, I think I cut 12 maybe. I don't know how many is on there left, but we cut some uh, just single ply belt bodies. So the this is a 12, uh, it's actually a 13, 15 ounce leather I cut uh, from our saddle skirting that we build our saddles with. And then I leveled them off in our splitter. So they're all consistent. And they're finished out to roughly about 12, 13 ounce, somewhere around there. So if you're wanting to build a single ply belt, not lined, but a single ply belt that you can tool and then just edge it and slick it and you don't have to sew it, you don't have to buck stitch it, you don't have to do anything, you still can if you'd like, but it would be just a single ply belt. We have some of those available on there. Um, we also offered, which we're sold out of now, but we offered a three pack of the uh, belt bodies for the line belt material packs. No liners in this pack, just three of the belt bodies. So if you have plenty of liner lining material for your belts, you just need the bodies or the, the you know the, the nine ten ounce, then that's a great little value there. Uh, three of those, and then we've got a lot of the wristlet purses. We've been offering those, like I said, on that cut bench page for quite a while. And everybody's really, really enjoyed those and they've been building a bunch of them. And so the dies are working. I've built a bunch of them, the dies work well. It just saves you so much time, especially for the zipper piece, not having to cut that out. But uh, we've got a full material pack. None of these packs will, will contain the zipper and the little strip for your wristlet. Cause some people do crossbody, some people do wristlet um, strap, a little, just a little short strap. And so we don't offer that material and we don't offer the zipper, mainly because I can't get a consistent supply of zippers. And so as many of these as we sell, it would just be very difficult for me to have enough zippers. Maybe at some point we'll get a bunch, we'll get the zippers that we like and, uh, and offer those. But I'm still trying to find the perfect zipper for these things. Like I said, this new zipper, um, we'd send it out in the newsletter and it's got a big ring on it and you could put a you know, a little tassel on here or something like that. So I really like that zipper. I just haven't used it enough to know how well that pull is gonna hold up. Sometimes these things are cheap and they break. And so we don't wanna offer that to you if it's gonna be kind of junky, but I'll use it just to try to try it and uh, and see, they seem really good. They seem seem like they're gonna hold up really well, but use whatever zipper you want. But So we have those material packs. They have the two, the two pieces of your chap material. We've got a couple different colors of those, a bunch of different colors of those actually. And so the, the two body pieces are clicked out, the two yoke panels are clicked out, and then the, the piece for the zipper in the middle is clicked out. All these pieces are pre-cut, all out of Herman Oak leather, except for the chap leather, obviously. And uh, you can get, get one of those. We've got, like I said, a bunch of different colors on there. And then we also are offering just the veg tan pieces in a three pack. So you'll get two yokes and a zipper panel times three so you'll get three setups basically if you have plenty of chap leather laying around or you have some chap leather you're wanting to make some of these for then you can definitely get the uh, herman oak veg tan parts for these purses uh, we offer those as a three pack on there as well but like i said that that's going to be on there there's things that are, may move over from that page onto the material packs page because the material pack page is something we want to keep in stock all the time the cut bench page is just more random things that I cut out, you know, it might be a breast collar. It might be, you know, there's some rope can lids on there. It might be um, a couple shave kits or something. It's just gonna be random things as I get a spot and I cut some extras, I'll throw them on there. It's just giving me a good way to, to uh, offer you some more Herman Oak and more options than just what we do on the material pack page. And then if they start selling well and they do well and all that, then maybe we'll convert those to a permanent product on our website on the material page and that way you can get those anytime you need to. But if you get a chance, check out from the cut bench. Been up for a while, but it's only been for the newsletter. If you're not on the newsletter, you might wanna to try to sign up for that. Like I said, we will send out a notification when we put new stuff on there. So it's a good way for you to know first that it is on there. Um, we don't trust social media to really get the information out to everybody um, like they're supposed to or like it's supposed to work just because everybody knows how that works. So we don't trust that. So we kind of rely more on our newsletter to get information to you to ensure that you got it. So it comes to your email. You can read it you can trash it. You can not open it. It doesn't whatever you want to do. But if you want to hear from us, then uh, be sure and sign up for the Leathercraft newsletter on our website. There's a bunch of forms on there to do that. All you got to do is put your name and email address in there. The next thing is we are making dies right now. We should have them. I would imagine I'll have them by the end of the week probably, but we're making dies for our pancake knife sheath. These dies will fit a double blade trapper, like a case trapper, uh, more maker, any kind of little double blade trapper knife. That's what this pattern will fit. 
we've already got the fold over knife sheath die and we've been selling those. Everybody's been building, building those sheaths and those are great. The pancake scabbards are also very popular and we build quite a few of those and I do not like cutting these out by hand. They, uh, they are not, not a whole lot of fun. So we're getting dies made for the front piece and the back piece. The dies that we're getting will not have the slot in there. Um, I had originally sent the pattern in for these two inch slots right here. The reason I'm, I told them not to do the slots um, is because when you're so, if this slot is cut out, when you're sewing that, depending on the presser foot on your machine, you may have some trouble because there's not a whole lot of material on the outside of that slot. Sewing down the middle part isn't a problem, but the outside part, that part may try to roll. And the other thing I thought about was if you're, if we get it, we can only get it on the front one because then if it stretches a little bit when you tool it, it's not gonna line up with the holes on the back side. So what we did was left this one without slots and had this one with slots. That's gonna pose a problem because you still gotta punch the slots out. So the way I look at it is if you've gotta punch the slots out through the back piece anyway, you might as well punch them through the whole thing at one time. And so it makes it a lot easier. Um, I would suggest if you're gonna make a lot of these, like if you make a lot of pancake knife sheaths and you're going to buy the material pack from us, because we will offer this in a material, but I'll just click out both pieces. We'll probably offer them in a three pack. Uh, and that way you can build, build three of them, maybe a three and a six pack, but it'll have both pieces clicked out of Herman Oak, ready to go. All you've got to do is pull them out of the box, tool them, sew them up, send them out. You can make these things very, very quickly. They're quicker than the fold over sheets. But if you're going to make a ton of these things and offer them at Christmas time or sell them at a, at a show or, or a uh, little trade show or something like that, then I would suggest buying a two inch uh, bag punch, a two inch oblong punch like this. I got this one at Weaver, I believe. It's a CS Osborne. It's a two inch. It works great and it saves you a lot of time. So after you get your sheath tooled and put together and sewn up and edged and slicked and all that stuff, then all you've got to do is come over here and line this up where you need your slots and then drive it through. Once you do that, then I usually, and I'll do another video showing how to make these, but when I, then I just take an edger and I edge the inside of the slot just because it makes it a little easier for the belt to go through. But this right here will save you a lot of time. If you don't have one of these, you're gonna have to punch like a number eight or something like that on each end and then try to cut in between those two holes. That's gonna take a lot of time. It's gonna be very frustrating. This tool right here, I, I believe was under $100. I think it was 75, somewhere around there. I'm not sure, I got it at Weaver, but like I said, look around, get you a two inch bag punch. It'll save you a lot of time and really, really make these efficient to make. I mean, you can make a dozen of these on a Saturday and then you've really got something to sell. And these actually sell, what we've noticed is we can sell these for a little bit more than we can the fold over sheets. On the fold over sheets, I get anywhere from 25 to 35, depending on what they are. These here, I get anywhere from 45 to 55 on these. And so, that, I mean, they're, if they're tooled, you know, then so these things are great. And then you can also take and make them out of like some harness leather or something like that, charge 30 bucks and you're still making money. These things are really, really nice. And at Christmas time, everybody loves knife sheets and uh, for stocking stuffers or whatever. So I would suggest either making them on your own. Like I said, we do have a video out. So if you want to go back and watch that paint, it's an old video. We did it. Um, I don't remember how many years ago, three or four years ago, and, it's, it, and it shows you, and we do have a pattern pack for that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another video on making this, because I adjusted this. This is actually a different pattern than what we offer uh, for sale right now. This is gonna be an updated one. The only thing I really changed was I added a little bit more meat around the bottom and the outside of the slots, because on my old pattern, I felt like there wasn't enough material on the outside. I've never had anybody come in where it had broken or ripped through but I was worried about over time it doing that. And so on the new pattern, I just kind of leveled it out and made it a little bit wider around these slots. That's really the only change. It may be a little bit wider in the middle, but your tooling patterns, if you've purchased that pattern pack for the pancake knife sheaths in the past, the digital pattern, those tooling patterns will still fit on here. You may just have to adjust it just a little bit. Once you trace it in there, you might have to kind of spread it out just a little bit. Cause I think this one's just, I made it just a little bit wider so the knives fit in there a little bit better. Um, but I will do another video, an updated video. We'll show you how to make these from start to finish. We'll do a new pattern pack that's completely new with new patterns, new tooling patterns in there, and, uh, and offer that as well so that you'll have twice the patterns. And uh, so hopefully that'll come out pretty quick. Like I said, this die should be here this week, if not first part of next week, and we'll start cutting those out 
and offering those on the website and we'll just they'll probably just go straight to the material page and we'll let y'all know about that but again we're going to let the newsletter know first so if you want to be a part of the newsletter go to our website and sign up for that also if you're following us on instagram you may have seen a short little video in our stories i think i may have posted it to our feed as well but of claudia burning a brand into a piece of leather a square of leather we've got a binder that we're going to make for a gentleman um, that we know and it's going to be just a just a three ring binder that'll have just a, that brand right there in the middle burned in and it's just plain with some pockets in there he left us his brand so that we could we could brand the leather because he wanted that on there and i've done it before probably two or three times before but with electric brands and so that was pretty neat we actually i was barbecuing so we had the the uh, pair burner going so we went ahead and heated that brand up and i let claudia claudia do it she's branded plenty of horses at the ranch where she worked so i gave her the the lead on that the only trick with when you do that if you're going to burn a brand into leather it works out great it does smoke a lot the first one i did i did in the shop and smoked out the entire shop and everybody was kind of upset so you might want to do it outside but when you do that your brand needs to be hot obviously you want to go just like you would on a cow put it down and kind of just kind of make sure you get it all roll it a little bit and then get off of it because you will go through maybe potentially all the way through or at least scary through the uh the thickness of leather that piece of leather was nine ten ounce and claudia probably went down about three sixteenths of an inch in a couple spots like so we got a little close i think it's going to be fine for the binder we're going to line it as well too but um but that's the only thing i would kind of caution you on it works great don't be scared to do it um it's only leather if you mess it up you can cut another piece but um but just don't stay on it too long because you will it will go through. It also kind of burns and crackles just just like it would on a cow. But this is uh, the, some of the tannins, I guess, and the oils that are in the leather kind of get crusty after it cools. Then you can brush that off. You will get a little bit of fire staining around the outside of the brand. You just got to kind of clean that up best you can. And then I'd oil it and bag coat it. It has a really neat look when it's done. I'll try to show a picture of that in uh, in next week's Monday video if I can get that finished up this week and kind of show you how it looks when it's completely done. But yeah, you can do it with little brands, uh, big brands. We've got our brand in two different sizes. So she she wants to try her brand on on there now and on a piece of leather, make something for her and do it. So, But um, I would suggest, you know, if you're doing it, especially super thin leather, and I would say like if you're going to do, say, four ounce or try to do it on a wallet or something, you need to be real careful because as that thin a leather, as it heats up, it's going to draw. And so it'll kind of warp and, and, and shrink a little bit around the brand. And then your piece of leather is not real flat. On something thick like 910, maybe even 5.6, something like that, it should stabilize. It shouldn't be an issue. So, But if you're doing real thin leather, just be careful. You might want to just kind of touch that and get off real quick so that you don't. Um, you want to just kind of burn it more like a laser not like a deep brand so that's the only thing just kind of be careful but it's kind of fun it's a different look and and uh if, especially cowboys and stuff if they've got an actual brand they're putting on cattle it's pretty neat to build them something and, and use that brand i've done it on a saddle twice probably where we've branded like the fender or the housing and uh it always looks good you know nobody's going to steal it at that point because it's got a brand actually in it so there's no way to scratch that out but speaking of saddles, let me show you what we got done on the other saddle there. We're almost done. I got the seat tooled yesterday, and uh, so we're going to start antiquing that and start assembling the saddle. We're still waiting on conchos, but they should be here hopefully pretty quick. But the saddle's pretty well done. So we got the seat glued in. I got the binder on, got it sewn, and we went ahead and um, got the seat, the inlaid seat tooled. As you can see, we had already antiqued everything except this area. This seat doesn't have any oil on it at all. The reason is because I needed to glue the seat down to be able to tool this, but I needed to antique the front before I glue the seat down in the front end of it because I don't want a chance getting antique on the rough out. So the easiest way to do that is to have the seat, the front of the seat, because like that other video, we just had the back glued down. So we're still able to lift the front of the seat up. So we did that, chalked it up to where it was standing up and that allowed me to oil and antique and get as messy as I need to get with the antique without chance of getting any antique on the seat. Once that was all done, then we could come in here and glue the seat down. Um, and gluing the seat down, now it's all glued down, now it's stable. We were able to tool the inlaid seat that we installed like in, um, as you saw in that video that we did. And so the inlaid seat is tooled inside the saddle just like the swells. And uh, I found that's just works best for me there. You know, you can sure, certainly try to tool that on the bench, but then you've got to line it up to where it's even. This ensures that everything's where it needs to be and it's all centered and I don't have to worry about it. So I just tool it in the seat. But now I have to come in here real easily, oil this, 
seal it and antique it without getting antique here. That's just going to take a steady hand and being careful. There's no other way around it on, on doing one of those at that point. So that's what we'll do. But we've got the, the housings done as well. They're ready to go. So we'll mount those on there. Once we get everything kind of old, we'll get those mounted and then start putting on all the other stuff. So we've also got the stirrups done. We got those antiqued. Like I said, I cover the stirrups, build them, do everything, put the, the tread in there and let all that dry before I ever oil and antique them. And uh, it just makes it a little bit easier for me than uh, trying to antique this and then put a wet tread on there without staining my antique and all that stuff. So that's the way I do them. But yeah, stirrups are ready to go. And then we've got the fenders and stirrup leathers and the flank girt and the billets, all that stuff's ready. So now today we'll antique that get everything ready and then start assembling it and then it'll be sitting on the floor waiting for conchos to get here and once they get here we'll screw them in and we'll be able to ship the saddle to the customer but that's really all i got for you this week guys i really appreciate it remember let me know in the comments or shoot us an email if you think we should shorten the name to just saddle shop briefing and then episode whatever or if we should just keep it monday morning saddle shop briefing that's the name that it has right now i'm just wondering if i should shorten it up or leave it alone let me know otherwise we'll see y'all next week in the monday morning briefing